Hi, Sharon. Good day, Fred. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going to turn the um, sound up a little bit so I can hear you. So, um, wh where are you? Are you in France? I'm in France. I've been in France since returning from Lausanne on the 15th. I got back just the day before shutdown. So what would have happened if you hadn't? <laughs> oh, I think everyone was being allowed to travel if they were traveling home. Uh, it was okay, just yeah. taking yeah. longer. And in fact, some young friends from Berlin were staying here while we were in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And it took them a, quite a long time to get back because they were held at the borders. And yep, yep. half the trains were canceled back to Germany. Oh, great. You know. Anyway, at least I got living. So, I mean, we were obviously talking today about um, a year ago when we were in Venice um, doing our Alive in the Universe. Um, do you think what you uh, presented there has any bearing on the world that we currently inhabit? Well, I, I was thinking of that because it is a collection of dreams. Hmm. And there's been so much on, through Facebook, other... Um, social media and so on, about dreaming under confinement. Yeah. And in fact, a young friend of mine, uh, Rona Lorimer, who is in confinement in Marseille, has set up, first it was through Tumblr, and now I think it's on a different site, a collection called Dreaming Under Confinement, yeah. which I'm probably going to work on her, mm. uh, with her on later, should we ever come out of confinement, to publish as a collection. Yeah. And various other people have intervened in that collection of dreams. At first, people could just up write into a Google okay, yeah. Do on Google Docs. People, people could just write into it. And then it was moved to something that was more formal and more enclosed. But people have been working with the material, editing it, looking yeah. at various themes, animals, okay. travel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. food. No, it's an interesting subject because I hardly ever dream and if I do, I don't remember them. But just since in the last few weeks, I have been dreaming much more and remembering what, you know, wake up, oh, I remember dreaming that. So there is something going on which is hard to, hard to understand really. But, mm -hmm. um, so tell us what, what, you, what you've been doing in the last year since... Um, since... <laughs> since, 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 since Venice. Um, I suppose more of same. Um, I. This is, I'm going into my last year of teaching, so my relationship with pedagogy has changed a great yeah. deal, mm. you know, as um, I sort of separate myself from it. So oddly, this um, period of confinement has felt a little bit like what retirement will be, yeah. which is mm. almost exactly the same, but without having to return to England to go yeah. up north. Yeah to teach um, so occasionally people ask me what I will do well I'll do what I've always been oh, doing that, that is <laughs> that with one, one aspect less you know so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been I work I had um, I worked on two quite big shows one in Lausanne yeah. um, which was in November which was quite complicated and then a version of it was reconsidered for um, Edizioni Periferia, which is in Luzerne, mm -hmm. which is a, a private press publisher, uh, but they also have an exhibition space and that opened more or less the day confinement across Europe was yeah, brought in. So it's been yet another in the long line of exhibitions I've done that no one sees. Well, that's, that's, there's, 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 uh, there's something in there somewhere, Jan. I'm sure you'll be able to make something from that in the future. Um, yes, I mean, Jani, Jani is opening it um, for the rest of this month, like yeah. the weekend. They only open at the weekend okay. anyway. So you say that the, the exhibition in November in Lausanne was, um, was complicated. Was that you making it complicated or it was just a complicated uh, transaction? It was it, 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 enormous. It was an enormous, enormous space absolutely okay. huge i was working for over a year on the work for the space i had a fantastic team who worked with me mm. um at the opening three um women artists who worked with text and performance uh, read or performed it 
was very, it was around, uh, on, I suppose, how, women and education was a constant thread of my work. And it was the, it, it, uh, the show was in a, at Circuit, which is one of the oldest artist run spaces uh, in Switzerland. They have a team of 12 and from the, uh, that team, they, I think they do four shows a year. It's one of the members who were curated and it was the first show that a young woman who's part of the collective had done. So it was very important to her but it was a little bit like a concession to it being their feminist show okay. because they hadn't really addressed okay. that in any way. And um, I suppose it was that that complicated it really. Yeah. And, um, and also that the, the guy who's the director, who's great, really fit, efficient, it really wasn't his cup of tea at okay. all. Okay. And, and, and it was quite difficult to work in a situation where the um, only word of praise I got was that I was the only artist who'd ever cleaned up the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> better than nothing. And it took me you know, quite a few days to kind of understand how uh, to work with him. We, uh, there were three, um, plinths made which were for the performance mm. and we saw those at just the day before the opening and Francois looked back at them he said oh he said they looked really good and I called everyone because Francois has said something nice about the show <laughs> so it became, it, oh. it became a kind of joke rather than it being traumatic but I think it was quite difficult for the young woman who was curating it is there a, um, a, a website or a document somewhere that one... Yes, could, yes, uh, yes, yes. On Circuit, they have very nice ex um, photographs of, yeah. of the show. Yeah. Um, Great. So, I mean, again, going backwards, and, but, but also going forwards, do, do you think that what you presented, you know, because I know you make work that has a sort of a sequence to it in a way. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that work you presented in Venice has had any effect on your sort of thinking over the year? Do you think? Well, it was, I suppose, trying to think in film, which doesn't come to me naturally. Mm. And how could I make a film that wasn't a film? Yeah. So I am about to start another work, which is quite similar, but shorter, because that mm. was kind of over a duration with the record that was yeah. played alongside that had to be turned on. Um, uh, Sigmund, Sigmund and Anna Freud, yes. which would have been shown in a film program at the Freud Museum ah, yes. in June or in September, but now it's really uncertain. Yes, yes. So I've, I've, I've delayed doing it because I've um, had to work on other things. Yes. And, and, and it's the use of the record player and the record, uh, or what was it in that? I mean, is it to add a sort of ev evocation of some, something which is not sort of about now? Yes, and also to think of, uh, 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 I think it was Foucault who called Freud the greatest listening ear yes. of the 20th century. And there's something about, you know, thinking of his master's voice, you know, Nipper looking into the speaker and Freud's yes. relation with, um, with sound. And I suppose that at the same time I was working on that, I'd spoken in at a little conference at the Freud Museum mm. where I'd written about Freud's listening yeah. in relation to uh, a, da a, a drawing by Dali that he made of Freud's ear like a snail shell yeah. and then Freud's own relation with music you know there's some, someone who was so acutely attuned to listening had a tin ear was deaf to music yeah. but would find himself singing yeah. nonetheless Sounds like me. <laughs> uh, but the, the, having that, you know, in our palazzo in Venice, having that, um, I think it was Red, the record player, if I remember rightly. Um, yes. Sitting in the middle, it, it was, it was very, it was very focusing. You know, it's quite a large space um, by the canal. I can't imagine it. I mean, I, 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 uh, Eileen sent me some very nice pictures of people listening, but there was a sense of them being posed, people. Okay. Sitting, looking like they were listening. As far as I know, no, they weren't posed. I wasn't there when she took them, but 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 no, they, it was it was a contemplative. You know, people did go in, and I think because it was slightly dark, it also mm -hmm. made people behave maybe in uh, maybe in a more natural way because they didn't mm -hmm. feel that they were being watched or or, or 
mm. way that you would do in a, a, a bright space. I don't know, but it was it was interesting having this little, little red thing making a noise coming out of this um, other cabinet. Yes, that's sort of that's um, not attached to the images. Yeah, that's apart from it, so they're running separate yeah. 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 alongside. Yeah. Yes, so um, COVID nineteen. Uh, and in a way, you've talked a little bit about how it's affected your recent plans. But I mean, what about, I mean, apart from artistic uh, plans you might have had, um, has it affect, I mean, how does it affect your day to day? I mean, is it? Oddly, our life here has changed virtually not at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a small village of six houses. I see, tiny. Yeah. And I'm fairly reclusive by nature anyway. Yeah. We go out and walk the dogs. We wave at people in the distance. Yeah. We see who needs what and when. My car has broken down anyway, so I, <laughs> I you know, it, it would be, I wouldn't be able, I can't get it repaired because it has to go on a low, you know, one of those lifting okay. things yeah. and be taken to someone, head gasket, gone. Um, oh. So it's just a kind of further slowing down of, of pace. Yeah. That said, that's kind of underpinned by an anxiety. Yeah. Uh, because nothing is ever going to be the same again. No, no. Yeah. But it's and, to imagine how it might be, really. Mm. I mean, it won't be the same. We know that, but how not the same? You know, people keep talking about this new normal thing. Um, you know, it's such a, a ridiculous term, I think, in a way that. Mm. It, it means nothing because it, it is completely meaningless yeah. and you know, i have uh, uh, and i've just um, in the middle of um finalizing the layout but i've been editing with rebecca jago a collection an anthology called on care okay. which we started two years ago and we've just both been for a number of reasons very very slow and it has 45 work essays yeah other pieces in it and suddenly, when we were actually putting it together uh, a month ago, we had a panic that we just hadn't addressed what was happening now, yeah. where care mm. was yes. more important yeah. than ever, you know, ever before. Yeah, yes. And Rebecca wondered if we ought to contact every one of the contributors and ask if they want to revise their piece. And I could just really see another two years of work yeah. coming. <laughs> But interestingly, no one contributing to the book um, raised it. So Rebecca and I wrote an anti-scriptum mm -hmm. for the text we'd sent to contributors two years ago that does talk about it. And the very moment that will actually go to the printers, I'm going to drop in a, a preface that just says what the current situation is. Yeah. Because it's, it changes so rapidly. Yeah. How do you feel, I mean, because you, um, you live and work uh, most of the time, at least in, in France and in rural France. I mean, do you feel that makes a big difference to the way you communicate with the rest of the world in that it positions you in a slightly more international space than artists working in the UK? I mean, we are this island off the edge of everything else. And it always seems to me that European art, you know, what we would what we can now call European artists, not, mm. not pre-Brexit artists, have a, a, a freer sort of passage around, around mainland Europe, you know, France, Germany, Switzerland, wherever. How do you think that feels different? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I was, two shows that I was in, am in, have been postponed. Mm. Um, we don't know when, one, one in two, January next year, yeah. another to again no date for it, and yeah. so the sense of circulation, it's it's not clear. We, I, I, I mean, normally, I mean, if 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 you if, if we hadn't got this current sort of position, do you think there's a do you think it feels different as an artist working in? in, in... I don't know because I still feel a little bit embedded in the UK okay, yeah, because yeah. of having to come yeah. back so often and I suppose probably my community is more there okay, yeah. than here okay, so, but yeah. that is probably because of living 
you know, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So having said that, in the area where, where there are quite a number of artists who are friends, yeah. who travel, show, who move. So yes, there is a kind of fluidity there. Whereabouts and I you, suppose you, that most of my projects have been in Europe rather than in yeah, England, yeah. apart from my publishing. Yeah, yeah. And this, have you found an online um, presence in, in, the, in the new world? Has that, has that changed? The way? Well, only in that I've been having to do a lot of Zoom meetings yeah, yeah. and because of the cancellation of projects, yeah. Uh, there have been more sort of interviews or putting text online yeah. but in a way I'm quite used to working like that anyway yeah. Yeah. I find the teaching online completely exhausting however yeah I've heard people say that um, several people have said that that it, it's it's it, the concentration levels are much higher and uh, that interaction that's sort of direct face-to-face -face, it focuses everything in which, which yeah, but, um, and there's a kind of removal from the from the people with whom yeah, one is talking. Yeah. I've got to do a seminar the week after the next with a group of them um, as a co correspondent to, for a PhD student at Goldsmith, mm -hmm. and it's in the evening. And I sort of wish I hadn't accepted it because I fear I'm going to make a most dreadful hash of it. <laughs> and I think it's I know what it is. I think I have to turn off an image of myself, it's because I can see myself. Yeah, yeah. Whereas when one is talking normally, um, one doesn't have that anxiety. Yeah. What one appears like. I feel less articulate. No. In fact, I've just written to someone with whom I did, did an interview saying, can we just delete at least half of what I said? <laughs> That's the other thing, isn't it? If it's if when it's sort of there on in digital, you know, it's 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 there. You can't it's the record of it for God's sake. You know, there's an exactly. imprint that's going to last forever unless you can remove it. Well, I must I must admit I've set up Zoom so that I'm just a little sort of blob in the corner that I can't see. So you know, my focus is on you. Otherwise, you do get very kind of. Sad. Oh yes, I should do that. But then the person who speaks comes to the foreground. I don't they? I've got you on gallery view. Totally distracting, I think. So. Anyway. I've got you on speaker view, that's much better. <laughs> I'm just like this sort of super egoic thing above you. Exactly. How are you finding it? We find well the whole the whole shutdown, well a bit like you, you know, we, we live in glorious isolation anyway. Um, I don't teach anymore. Um, you know, one or two projects have been cancelled, both mm -hmm. myself and uh, our wife Sue, she, you know, her mm -hmm. Her uh, next few months have been have been stopped, um, uh, but they're trying to resurrect some things in a in a digital version. Um, mm. But apart from that, you know, in fact, probably locally up our little lane, we see more people now because there are more people out cycling and walking, and and when they do go past, they either go past, you know, fully masked and you know terrified of the world, or um, are you know quite quite keen just to stop and you know chew the card you know across the road um, at a distance at yes a distance, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very quiet i mean that's a i mean it's very quiet here anyway but uh, you know it's 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 spookily quiet now it's all you can hear are birds and bees and mm. you know the wind and the trees it's 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 magical but mm. but um I think but that's the strange dreamlike quality isn't it yeah, no exactly it is it's like and it. it's sort of like a sort of calm before the storm, you know. Yeah, you know, people keep saying this might be the case. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I can't imagine the next state. I have to, in principle, I have to go back to London on the 1st of June. Uh -huh. I arranged for some young friends to come and live in the flat in London sure. uh, because I have an elderly upstairs neighbour with dementia and yeah. um, I was worried mm. if the care workers stopped coming yeah, to her, yeah. what would happen? So they are there and they're now going to stay through till September. Okay. Yeah. Because then, uh, um, but Tom has to try and let his flat in Paris. So I, I just look, just stay and yeah. just pay the bills, a minimum yeah. towards the bills in return for upkeeping yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the garden. But I've just published two new books. Um, in the series called one collection of poems by Florence Uniac and a 
first novel by the philosopher Simon um, Wertham. Mm -hmm. And they were published a month ago, delivered to the flat in London. All the book stock is there. Hello. There's no post office here. Obviously, Simon and Florence want them to be in circulation. I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, but I've been delaying it because I have to work out a method of distribution. And now I think I can sort that out yes. with the, the friends who are in, in, in the flat. Um, but it, uh, three book fairs in which I was participating have been cancelled. Yeah. So it's also a kind of financial aspect. Yeah, well, presumably you've got a lot of stock sitting there doing nothing as well. Which... Yes, um, fortunately I do them in pretty small print runs, yeah. but I've just moved everything to London because I was trying to separate my bibliotheque from my own practice okay. a bit yeah. more. Yes. Um, to make it clear that they had a, dis a distinction. And I'm just, yeah. just about to move studios into the house, but everything is taking, because you know, what's the, you know, I can make some work and I'll sit on it, but then that's what we do anyway. That's what we do, for sure. sure. So where are you? I mean, you're working at the moment, so you've got time to work. Is, are you in your studio now? Is that your? I'm in my studio now because the, of course, the broadband has stopped work. The Wi-Fi stopped working in the house, yeah. and we can't. I spent two hours of my life. I'll never get back with the technical assistance at France Orange. Okay. A delightful girl. The beginning of the conversation started with, I think it's the Wi-Fi extenders that aren't working, and it ended with her saying, I think it is your Wi-Fi extenders that are after two hours switching things on, moving in uh, around. So at the moment I'm in the studio because it's where I've got Ethernet. Okay, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well I was, I was praying that this connection today would hold up because we've had BT working in the, in the, you know, in the lane uh, for the last couple of days and it, it has been very patchy. And when I first turned you on, it was like a sort of wonderful ripple. Oh yeah, and it comes up that message that you're, connection is unstable but you feel that anyway that we all our connections are unstable you know this is like a metaphor for how we live so, so are there any um i'm just slightly conscious of, of uh, you know the slot the half hour slot we've got um with zoom uh, are there any positives do you think that, that you can see either for you now or for the future yes in a terrible terrible way i really like it yeah. but that's really frightening <laughs> that I should like it so much. Why? What I don't like is the anxiety. I'm sleeping incredibly badly. I wake up, oh. I sleep badly anyway, but much, much worse. Yeah. And, so, and when I go out to buy food in any place that isn't just the market garden of some friends yeah. or so, I come back with this absolute knot yeah. in the chest. So the enjoyment of it is a, perhaps a false enjoyment. Yeah, yeah. But there's something that in a terrible way that's allowed a breathing space, mm -hmm. a feeling of an extended holiday. It is like a big hiatus, certainly. It's just a bit yeah. between something and something, the old world. And, and that's remarkably enjoyable in one sense mm -hmm. and incredibly anxiety yeah. provoking in another and then there's a kind of sense of business as usual coming in yeah. and trying to deal with it uh, yeah. yesterday five emails about um i'm a union rep at the university mm -hmm. and a great anxiety because someone who'd taken a grievance it's not being heard okay. because it's something that has to happen face to face yeah. so what's yeah. being put in yeah. in place and now all of the discussions talking about how we'll teach next year. Yeah. Now, for part of me, I think, well, I don't care. So I when do you actually finish? In this, do you finish this year? I finish, I'm going to give my notice in in March yeah. and then I'll be gone in May, June. Another year from now. Yeah. And, but at the same time, I feel I want to leave things that will work for colleagues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, is a sense of what will happen, will we go to virtual teaching? The lecture series that I've convened for many years, mm. if we work on as a kind of online delivery, yeah. will that then, uh, so the suggestion that those lectures are recorded or whatever form our guests speak in. Mm. So 
I've suggested said if they agree yes but they're archived for only a year and after that they're deleted okay. yeah. Yeah. so that there can't be the can't university the stock of them. <laughs> making stock of things yeah. and to redundancy and say well actually we've got all those lectures of last year yeah we'll just run them again. again yeah 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 that's uh so i'm yeah. kind of acutely conscious of that especially as everything that is happening in the higher education well, well, well done well done because uh, yeah otherwise that would be exactly what <laughs> these people would do i'm sure <laughs> um Sharon, one, one last question really um after you know, after we are all let out, and I think France has been particularly draconian in, in, in locking you all up, uh, from what I hear, um, is there something you're it's in effect? <laughs> it seems to have worked. Yeah, well, that's that's the good news, isn't it? That's really good. Is there something you're desperate to do? Something that you have not been able to do? You know, like even if it's like visit. The yes, market. I'd really like to go to a bookshop. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> And not get things sent online. I would really, that's the, I'd really like to go to a museum. Yeah. I'd yeah. really like to go to an archive. I'd really like some real presence. There's some phys physicality with the world. Yes. Yeah. And I've tried, and tried to enter into the spirit of, you know, Zoom drinks with friends. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Very distracting. We decide. I just have to wander off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the great thing. You can always do that. And uh, yeah, no, that's um, that's good. Okay, so thank you ever so much, Sharon. Um, that's been really nice to see you. And uh, you know, because yes. we haven't really spoken for some time. And um, and um, no, I, and we didn't get to meet in Venice. Yeah, so, so. So, um, so it's been 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 very good. And good to see the, your space and uh, you know, picture somebody. Oh, the messy studio, yes. In the space. Um, are, they, are they drawings behind you? Are, are, oh, there's some new drawings, um, uh, which I've got a bit fed up with these, so I'm stopping these. It's called, they're called Folie à deux. And um, they're always two women and they've got cat's ears and tails, but I'm not very good at the cat's tails. <laughs> you just can't <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. and whiskers and paws. Um, I've nice. been trying to practice doing fur. Yeah, well they look very French anyway. <laughs> yes, well actually uh, uh, someone yesterday commented that they uh, are like um, Elizabeth, they made him think of the designer Elizabeth Hawes who was working in the 30s in yes. the state. Her, her, her clothes. So, yeah. so I'm just going to start some more of those. Yeah. Great. Knocking off a few. Right, well, I'm going to say goodbye and then I'm going to go and take a photograph of a, a 19th century French drawing that I've got, which you might quite like. <laughs> so oh, that sounds terrific. I'll send it to you. Okay, Karen, great take to see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye.